Hey, what's up everybody? Dennis here, Analog Archives. I hope everybody's doing great. Uh, what we're doing today is a 2,000 sub contest video. 2,000 subs? Yeah, thanks guys. Uh, much appreciated. Love, love the conversations that you guys um, have with me in the comments and with the other uh, people in the comments as well. The best part of doing these videos is basically the interaction I have um, with the comments and you guys. Uh, with your opinions of what you think about certain things and uh, really appreciate it and love uh, all you guys so cheers well I don't know what the fuck that was uh, cheers anyways um, also all the streams that I've been on really appreciate you guys inviting me I know I can't make them all the time but uh, yeah the ones I've been on just awesome all the deep dives all the channels that have invited me on really appreciate it um, so cheers to you guys too um, love the conversations with all the metal guys all the hangouts that we have definitely awesome all right so you might be saying what is this contest mister all right let me tell you so I think when a debut record comes out for the most part people kind of latch onto that record especially if it's the first record they've heard from the band so I kind of wanted to do like a second record and I think this has time for a band to change because sometimes a second record doesn't come out for years after that first record, right? So I thought I should do like a second record that's as good or better than the debut, depending on the record. Um, and this contest is available for anyone. If you guys want to go and do new wave, punk, rock, disco, reggae, hip hop, rap, whatever you guys want to do, it's open. This is open to the vinyl community, this contest is. I'd love to see different um, different music. I love all kinds of music, so it's cool to see somebody's top second records. Maybe I missed them along the way. And I'll try to do some here that maybe a lot of, a lot of people don't know and a lot I haven't talked about much. Um, for the most part, most of the metal people here are going to know what they are. Uh, but other than that, I thought, let's do that. And you guys pick your top ten. Or it doesn't have to be top. Just pick 10 records. It doesn't have to be your top 10 second records that came out. I just went through my records and picked out, you know, second records that I wanted to talk about. So, um, and the contest, pick 10 at least. If you do an entry, like a video, um, definitely tag me in it or in the comments below. Tell me you did the video so no, I know you did it. And I'll give you two entries for the video. If you just want to write in the comments below your t your top um, second or your second records that you think are as good or better than the debut, you'll be you'll have one entry into the contest. Pretty standard stuff, right? And then it's the third today, so I give you guys a month. So October third, um, that'll be the last day that you can do the entry for the um, contest. And I think I'm just going to give away what I did last time, 60 bucks, because um, it's available around the country. I would send stuff, but if I send something to Australia, it's like $20 to send a fucking CD. So it kind of defeats the purpose of sending anything um, out of state, and I don't want to keep it just to the states. So, And I figure 60 bucks, you guys can spend it on a record or spend it on whatever the fuck you want. So that's kind of a cool prize, too, because it's you can do whatever you want with it fucking cold hard cash actually it's not it's a fucking digital currency <laughs> all right um anyways so second records so i picked some records here i kind of separate them by thrash um a little death metal and a little sprinkling of crossover and some black metal so i thought hey i'll just hit on all these genres i picked more than 10 you guys can pick more than 10 if you want um you can pick 40 records i don't give a shit um, just pick 10 at least all right first pick um, this is a band called virus and this album's called force recon always like that logo that's sick um, these guys are from the UK this came out this is on combat I think this came out in 88 I didn't get all the dates for all these because it doesn't matter they're all old school shit um, yeah combat cool insert this is a killer record, man. Um, if you guys don't know Virus, it started out as 
kind of like the second band we're going to talk about that started out as like a more of a punk crust band uh, opening up for bands like Conflict and whatnot. And then their first record was Pray for War, which is way more uh, punk crust hardcore, but mixed with metal as well. It's a ripping album as well. But I always loved this record. It was one of those blind buys I just picked up because of the cover. Oh, is that cover sick? Don't know what the hell that why he has a weird steer on his helmet, but still cool. Killer shit. If you like crunchy thrash with a little bit of a um, punk edge to it, a little crusty edge, definitely check this one out. Um, songs like Viral Warfare, Release the Dead, Hungry for Blood, Testify to Me. Just fucking monster ripping thrash songs. And you know, the vocals are more in the punk side. Um, but there's a lot of killer riffs on this shit. Just killer production too. I love the production on this. Super dirty sounding. Not as dirty as Pray for War, but it's like just has that like live feel to it. All right, second record I told you I was going to talk about. Another UK band, uh, Onslaught, The Force. Yeah, man. Um, just a banger. And this one's on Under One Flag. I don't, I think this was released on Combat 2. Um, I'm not positive. I want to say it was. But yeah, this is the Under One Flag version. I think this was the original version released in the UK. I mean, maybe they were both released at the same time, the Combat and... Um, under one flag. I don't know why it says flag one. This can't be the first under one flag release, but man, this album, super underrated. Um, again, their first uh, record, Power From Hell, was more a hardcore band uh, that turned into a metal band. So Power From Hell is more, more early first wave black metal mixed with some thrash and some punk. And this one's just straight up fucking thrash. Uh, Let There Be Death, Metal Forces, Fight with the Beast, Demoniac, Flame of the Antichrist, Contract in Blood, Grass Till Death. So kind of imagine like a crusty exodus almost. Um, but yeah, man, this album. Just uh, fucking the riffs on this. Oh my God, dude. Never get bored of this record ever since it came out. I want to say this was 86 or 87. I don't see a date on here. I don't think it's 88, though. Definitely. Oh, yeah, 86. Onslaught, The Force, 86. It's up there. Um, yeah, man. Killer record. If you haven't heard this one, check it out. If you like, um, like, Bonded by Blood era Exodus mixed with some, like, Discharge or something. Um, all right. And this one. So you guys all know this record. Uh, Destruction. Uh, Eternal Devastation, man just a killer record again this is so infernal overkill i mean you can i'm not counting the eps on this some i might you guys can do eps if you want to count the ep as the debut that's fine um this is a metal blade version so this album when it came out i was kind of taken aback a little bit because it didn't sound like infernal overkill um because i heard the i have i've heard destruction ever since um the ep so I heard that first, then Infernal, then this record. Uh, Curse the Gods, Confound Games. Like, every song on here is just fucking just crushing. The guitarist has this weird, like... I don't know. I can't explain the sound, but this kind of, like, really hollow sound to it, which I had to get used to when it first came out because I was like, oh, I want it to be heavier sounding. But I got really... I really thought this was a unique sound for this record. Um... And the songs are really, really well written. Uh, it's just a little bit where Infernal Overkill still had that black metal feel. This is going straight to more, obviously, on the technical thrash side. I think Release came out after this where they kind of jumped the shark on that one. Where they went, they got too crazy to try to outdo themselves. Where I feel on this one, they, they, they hit that perfect mark in between Release and Infernal Overkill. Where it kind of satisfied both fans. Uh, but yeah, just a banger, banger of a record. Um, do I like this better than Infernal Overkill? No. I like Infernal Overkill just a little bit more. Um, but this album's killer. Oh, I forgot this. See, I wanted to tell you whether I like this one better, these two. Um, I do like this one better than the original, and I like 
uh, the force better. So these, so we got two betters, one just as good, which is uh, in um, Eternal Devastation. Just as good as a debut. All right, up next, here's a little one. I don't know if I've ever talked about this record. At War, Retaliatory Strike. And this was on New Renaissance Records, 1988. Uh, just a killer band that goes overlooked by a lot of people. Um, cool little looking insert there. And if you don't know At War, um, their whole um, concept is all, it's all war stuff. So basically think like bolt thrower type stuff as far as um, this is more like Vietnam and uh, I would say like more like Vietnam and World War II type stuff but more leaning towards like Vietnam I would say at war is more like that um, songs like Conscious Conscientious Objector uh, Creed of the Sniper Covert Sins Crush Your Life Felon's Guilt Church and State Gutless Sympathizer so you can kind of see where they're going with this um, almost like a concept record about you know people against the war and people in the war and that kind of stuff but this album is just fucking a ripper, man. Killer Thrash. Um, kind of has a sound all its own. That's what I liked about some of these '80s thrash bands. Is they didn't, they weren't like, oh, that sounds like Slayer. That they weren't pigeonholed. They almost said just have this kind of just a thrash sound where they just have their own sound, which is killer. I mean, definitely there is some comparisons to Slayer and whatnot, but uh, yeah, man, just a killer record. Uh, co-engineered by Rob Hunter cool um, Alex Perales actually produced and engineered this which is a little bit strange for a non uh, Megaforce record right um, but yeah New Renaissance um, 88 killer record um, their first is Ordered to Kill which another killer record that one has more of a motorhead feel to it um, I like that record a lot too uh, this one I like a little bit more, so I'm going to go better on At War Retaliatory Strike. All right, one of my all-time favorite records. Had to pick this one. Had to pick some commons. Uh, creator, pleasure to kill, man. Um, what are you going to say? <laughs> um, 85, is this 85? 86, sorry. 86, pleasure to kill. Hell yeah, man. Just a fucking ripper of a record not going to really go into too much um that's cool it's got the order i mean the all the records that were on noise records at the time which is cool to see on the insert um yeah i mean shit from the pestilence all the way or uh, choir of the damned all the way down to fucking under the guillotine just a non-stop ripper of a record heavy riffs fast riffs just balls to the wall fucking raging fucking thrash record um and again have their own sound man i mean people compare stuff to creator now but um from what i was told they were listening to a lot of seven churches while they were recording this i hear it a little bit um but yeah man just a fucking banger of a record um better than the debut i would say yes and i love the debut as well don't get me wrong uh but yeah man this record um, just just basically is just destroy it doesn't destroy the first record but it just has a completely different sound whereas the first one still had that um, black metal feel to it a little bit all those like early German bands still had that Sodomish black metal feel to them Venom uh, Sodom so yeah but, uh, yeah man just a killer record can't say enough about that one better than the debut and up next another banger uh sepultura schizophrenia this is the cogumelo gatefold uh from i believe this came out in 87 87 schizophrenia man so this record big record in my life especially when it came out i was really heavily into this record um from the past comes the storm, escape the void, to the wall, the abyss, septic uh, schizo. Man, this record just, again, man, another one that's beginning to end, just a 
nonstop fucking ripper of a record. Um, I know on uh, Morbid Visions they had more of a more of a black metal feel again, but it was still kind of thrash death almost. And this one goes more has more of a thrash edge. So I think this is almost like a mix between uh, Morbid uh, Visions and I would say um, and uh, from beneath the remains. It's like in between those two. Again, it's like in between that pocket where it still has influences from the first, but you can tell where this is going to go. So yeah, man, uh, just a great, great record. Killer. It's thin production, but I don't care. It sounds fucking killer. All right, up next, another killer record. Uh, these guys are from Switzerland, man. Coroner, Punishment for Decadence. Man, another fucking killer record. Um, this is on Noise as well. I think this came out in, I want to say 88. Yeah, 88. I remember seeing the video for uh, Mass Jackal. Just a killer fucking song, man. Uh, love the debut as well, R.I.P., but this is a fucking banger. A little bit more technical than R.I.P., uh, but still has that same sound to it and just a lot more going on on this. Uh, Shadows of a Lost Dream, The New Breed. Again, Mass Jackal, Skeleton on Your Shoulder. You can tell they were getting into a more of a technical thrash, but at this point they still had their roots. Uh, but yeah, man, just a killer, killer record. Is it better than R.I.P.? I would say no. But, still a killer record, just as good, and I didn't do this one. Is it better than the debut? No. I love the debut. It's probably my favorite Sepultura, but this is as good, but not better than the debut. All right, let's get into some death metal, guys. Um, Autopsy, Mental Funeral. Yeah. Look at that sucker. This is a repress. It's a limited edition of 1,000. I don't know. Is there a 1,000 people that need to buy this? Oh, this is cool. It's on, like, red. Uh, still got the cool Peaceville logo on it, so that's cool. I don't remember when I got this, but I think I found it somewhere. Uh, an old copy. I think it's from, like, 2011, 2010. So I guess it's getting up there in age. But, um, yeah, killer record, man. Uh, Twisted Mass, A Burnt Decay, Grip of Winter, Flesh Crawl, Slaughter Day, Way Doomier, Bone Saw is another banger, Hole in the Head, Robbing the Grave. Way Doomier than the first one. I think this album's a lot darker, honestly, than the first record. Um, just a fucking crushing Death Doom record, I guess you can call it. Although it leans a lot heavier on the death metal side than doom metal side, but love love this record killer killer second uh release by autopsy um is it as good as severed survival no no but is it, i mean is it better than severed survival it's not better it's as good i would say as severed survival so there's another one here's kind of a controversial one in tomb clandin clandestine um yeah man um this is a earache repress I think it's just black if I remember yeah it's just black um, I don't again I don't know when this came out it's one of their dynamic range records this actually sounds really good this vinyl pressing uh, but it, I know some of these uh, represses don't sound so great but this this actually sounds killer man um, so yeah kudos to earache for putting out a good repress uh, what can you say about this record? Um, surprised a lot without LG in the band. Um, I forgot who sang on this. Nick Anderson, I think. Um, but it has uh, just some great, great songs on it, dude. Um, Living Dead. I love how the songs kind of meld with each other. Like Living Dead into Sinner's Bleed to Evil, uh, Evil Inn, Chaos Breed. Like that first side kind of just kind of goes into each other. Stranger Eons, great song. Blessed Be, Severe Burns, taken from the demo. Uh, Through the Colonnades, and Crawl. Man, Crawl's a killer song. Uh, I wish they would have had the 
The singer, I believe from Nirvana 2002, who did the vocals on the Crawl EP. I wish he did the vocals on this. It would have been so much better. Uh, but the vocals are probably, I'm kind of complaining a little bit about it. It doesn't bug me as much as it bugs other people. I don't mind the vocals as much. I've heard people just like, I can't stand the vocals. I won't listen to the record. I'm like, it doesn't bug me that much. Uh, yeah. I don't think LG would have done that great of a job the way that this album's constructed, really. So I think they really needed someone new for this record, honestly. Um, a little bit more thrashy than the first record, I would say. Has more of a Slayer feel to it than it does uh, death metal, but just a fucking banger of a record. Uh, definitely deserves to be up there as some people's favorite death metal record. But yeah, killer record. Is it, as, is it better than... Uh, left hand path definitely not man you can't I mean you're not gonna find a better Swedish death metal record than left hand path but I think this is a great debut I think it's just as good but in a different way as left hand path but yeah great record great fucking record alright uh, here's one that a lot of people don't show ever I don't know why um, nuclear assault survive this was their second um, record, obviously, uh, 1986. And this was on IRS Metal. I think guess IRS had their own label, IRS Metal Combat, when they were all branching out. So Combat does get some credit on this, although if you look at the label, it's just IRS. And this is a killer, killer record, man, in my opinion. Game Over, I love. I love the EPs. Um, Plague and Brain Dead. Uh, is it Brain Dead? Brain Death. Uh, but yeah, man. Killer, killer record. Rise from the ashes into brainwashed. Survive. Fight to be free. Um, Great Depression. Equal rights. Uh, technology. Eh, it has a lame cover of Good Times, Bad Times on it, which is pointless to have on here, but uh, other than that, dude, pff, man, this this album smokes. Uh, Hit is definitely as good as Game Over. Some songs are better than on Game Over, but I, I, I just love Game Over so much that I can't say it's better than Game Over. Uh, but it's just as good as Game Over. Like I said, some of the songs like Brainwashed are probably better than some of the songs on Game Over, so... These two albums, and I like the production on this one a little bit more. It has more of a thicker sound to it than on um, Game Over. So I like the production on this better, too. But yeah, man, great, great fucking record. Uh, definitely check it out. Here's a here's a cool crossover record that, again, not a lot of people talk about. Uh, Excel, the joke's on you, man. Oh, man. I used to skate to this record all the time. And the first record, too. I think this again came out in 88. I can't read the date. On Obviously these guys were from Venice. On This is on Caroline Records. It's cool art there. I think the famous thing for this record too is people were always saying how Inner Sandman ripped off one of the songs on here. I believe it's Shadow Winds. Um, the beginning of that part. Um, everybody was always saying, oh that's fucking... Metallica ripped them off. I can't see Metallica listening to this record, honestly. I mean, they could have, but it's kind of a far cry. Uh, Trapped in the Emotional Voids, a killer song. Uh, just so many great songs on here. Uh, I Never Denied is a great song. My Thoughts. God, just a great record, man. Again, it has some stupid cover of fucking... Uh, message in a Bottle by the Police, which I think some people actually like. Uh, affli uh, affliction blends with resentment. That's a fucking badass song. Like I said, Shadow Winds is killer. Every song in here is really good. It leans more to the metal side, more to the thrash metal side than it does crossover on this one um, compared to um, the first one. But uh, the first one's a fucking masterpiece um, Split Image that's the name of the first record just a fucking crossover masterpiece you're never going to touch that record but this album I think is a really really good um, second record that I kind of had to get into it took me a while because I 
I wanted more split image. Um, and I believe this came out in 80, 88. I can't read the date. It's either 87 or 88. Um, but yeah, man. Killer, killer fucking crossover from Venice. If you like like suicidal, um, early suicidal, like join the army and maybe a third record. Um, how will I laugh? Somewhere in there, but the vocals on this are way better. I love this fucking record. Um, killer record, is it as good as Split Image? I would say yes. Is it better? No. Split Image, fucking... That's one of the best fucking crossover records, in my opinion. So, Killer uh, crossover from Venice, California. All right, here's another one, man. Um, DRI, dealing with it. Oh, man, dude. Yeah, hands... Just hands down one of the best fucking hardcore crossover punk records ever made. I'd rather be sleeping, Madman, Couch Slouch, God is Broke, Nursing Home Blues, Reaganomics. Definitely has some songs off the first Dirty Rotten LP, um, but uh, redone here. And this is when DRI was their best, man. This is just a certified fucking classic on Death Records. Uh, 1985 man it doesn't get better than this as if you want to listen to like I said punk crossover and it's on death records I thought there was an insert yeah lyric sheet there again not a record I talk a lot about I think I did a top some crossover on one of my live streams at some point it's probably on there um, but yeah man <sighs> DRI dealing with it better than the debut yes Yes, better than Dirty Rotten LP. And I love Dirty Rotten LP, don't get me wrong. That's the first one I had. So, a um, buddy of mine that I used to skate with, he was the one that recorded me the uh, Violent Pacification EP. So, that's the first time I heard him. So, that was... So, I kind of went in that route when I heard DRI. He might have recorded me um, that first one, too. I don't recall, so... Um, anyways... One more crossover. Uh, Cryptic Slaughter, Money Talks, man. Like it says, the second album from Death Records, Punk Trash Killers, Cryptic Slaughter. I don't. I think they meant thrash. I don't know why people used to always say trash instead of thrash. Especially in the UK, people would always be like, I like trash metal. And I'm like, what the fuck's trash metal? Um, this album will put Cryptic Slaughter in the class of DRI and COC as the leaders of the thrash scene. So it's thrash there, but trash here. I don't know. Beats me, man. I don't know who did the hype stickers, but... Um, Metal Blade Records. This is uh, their second record after Convicted. Um, this came out in 1987 on Death Records. This has an insert. Just lyrics and like some tomfoolery around the edges there. Um, as all 80s metal records had. Gotta have that collage, right? I love the record cover too. Um, just a, again, really important record for me growing up. 87, it was a big record for me. Um, I was probably really rebellious at the time, so this kind of hit the spot for me. Right along with Convicted. Love Convicted too. But this album, I mean, the songs on here are a little more well-written, more to them. A little bit more metal than on uh, Convicted as well. So, Money Talks, um, Set Your Own Pace, Freedom of Expression, Human Contrast, Tables Have Turned, uh, American Heroes. Just every song on here, again, just a banger. Love this record. Is it better than Convicted? I like this record better than Convicted. I love Convicted, don't get me wrong. Love that record, but for me, uh, I like the way the songs are written on this more. Um, just always been a catchier record for me. Um, are there some songs on Convicted that are better than some of the songs on this? Yes, definitely. But as a whole, I would say this is a better record than Convicted for me. And like I say, you guys can have a different opinion. I don't give a shit. Um, so let's check this one out. Dark Angel, Leave Scars. Um, so, this is when uh, Ron Reinhardt joined the band after Don Dottie 
uh, got kicked out. I don't remember exactly what the deal was with him. Um, this is a completely different sounding record than I, than uh, Darkness Descends. Not completely, but it's a lot more thought out than just ripping thrash like Darkness Descends was. Um, but I have some really heavy songs on here. Oh, uh, shit. No One Answers, Never to Rise Again, Death of Innocence, again, stupid fucking cover song, Immigrant Song, I don't know why that's on here, but they decided to do that, uh, Older Than Time Itself, Promise Agony, Leave Scars, oh, man, just some really, really good classic fucking songs on this record, um, do I wish Don Dotty sang on it? Yeah, I think it would have been better. I'm not a big fan of Ron Reinhardt's voice as much as Don Dotty. I really like his voice. I like his screams. I just feel he's more of a... What's the word for it? More of a natural... Maybe not a better singer, but he just has a more... He's almost like a Paul Bailoff, where you can just feel the intensity in his voice, whereas this seems more like a... Like I'm singing. I'm... I'm singing! Um... He just has those like high notes where he's got to like show off his vocals and stuff like that. Whereas Dottie would just do a fucking array of scream or something. Uh, but yeah, killer record, killer fucking thrash record. Again, took me time to get into this record mainly because I love Darkness Descend so much. Um, and Don Dottie wasn't on it. Is it as good as Darkness? It's right up there. I would say it is as good as Darkness Descends. Not even close to being better. Darkness Descends fucking just destroys this record. Um, and I like this record a lot. I think it's just about as good as Darkness Descends, except for the vocals. Um, if Don Dotty sang on this, I think this would have been probably right along the same lines as Darkness Descends for me. But killer record none the least. Uh, blessed Death, man. Uh, Destined for Extinction. Killer, killer record. Can't remember the name of the first record. I think it's um, fuck. not all for one, but oh well. I don't remember the name of the first one, um, but this one, man, just an all-out fucking ripping thrash record, dude. And this guy's screams are fucking nightmarish. He has those like super high-pitched fucking screams out of nowhere, but then he goes fucking down and this guy's just insane dude he's like one of those insane vocalists that's just, just fucking going 100 percent all the time um but yeah on road racer records i believe this came out in 88 uh kind of just a generic insert there uh, i, I want to say 88 i wish it would just have the dates 87 87 so i'm wrong so i think um the first one the first blessed death I think it's called Killer Be Killed. Yes. Uh, came out in 86 or 85, somewhere around there. Probably 85. And that was on, I think it was on Metal Blade or might have been on Road Racer 2. I don't remember. But this album, is it better than the debut? Nope, not for me. Uh, I love the debut. It's one of my favorite thrash records. This is, I mean, but it has heavy metal elements. This one is more of just a ripping speed metal thrash record. Whereas that one has different elements, the first one, which I like more. I like the songs on it better. Um, I grew up listening to it, I guess. So, uh, But this one, man. Painkiller, uh, Pray for Death, uh, Curse, of the, Curse of Weapons, Alien Impregnation. Holy shit. It's a ripper of a record, man. It's as good as uh, Killer Be Killed, just not better. All right, let's get into some of these, man. Uh, Celtic Frost to Megatherian. I know what you're saying. That's their first record because of the Morbid Tales was an EP. Eh, I don't think so. I always considered Morbid Tale a full length. Um, yeah, it's only got, what, six songs on it or something. Noise records. Um, but it always felt like a record, a full length to me, not an EP. Um, so... I count this as basically their second second release. I guess it, it could technically, like I said, a debut could be an EP. So I'm not holding 
you know, those strict standards to it. You're out of the contest, buddy. That's not a fucking full length. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a full length, so. But yeah, this is, man, this album just fucking crushes. I know some people don't like it, and you can already see, like, the kind of glammy shit coming out that they're going to be turning into on Cold Lake or fucking into the pandemonium wearing NASA shirts and shit. Uh, but this, they're still kind of in their semi-black metal phase. Um, Innocence and Wrath are super... Um, Ursiper, sorry. Uh, Jewel Throne. Fucking Circle of the Tyrants, obviously. Just Necromantical Screams. Just fucking dark, heavy, fucking blackened thrash metal. Just, I'd still say this is more of a black metal record than anything else. First wave, obviously. Um, do has some doomy parts to it. Just crunchy guitars and Tom Warrior's vocals are just fucking amazing, man. Um, classic, classic fucking record. Is it better than Morbid Tales? Fuck no. Morbid Tales is fucking one of my favorite fucking EPs, LPs, whatever you want to call it. I think too they added a couple songs on the version I have, on the U.S. version. I can't, I don't remember honestly might just be an intro thing or something but is it as good as morbid tales yes it is all right let's let's take a look at some venom black metal i would take this out but this is my i just grabbed this one it's the gray swirl press i don't know why i'd grab this copy but i did so you have to deal with the fucking plastic and i can take this out all right um this has, of course, black metal on it to hell and back. Again, this is one of those records that pretty much every song is fucking great, except for probably Teacher's Pet. Fucking weak-ass track. Um, but other than that, man, Count as Bathory, Sacrifice, Don't Burn the Witch is fucking sick. That goes into the At War with Satan. Fucking love it, man. Um, just a great, great black metal record. Um, I think the first record, uh, Welcome to Hell, had more more motorhead influences whereas this one's more new wave of british heavy metal sounding um real real heavy on the on the black metal on this one as far as topics go oh cool check it out i didn't know this was in here this cool little fucking order form you can order that venom scarf and a little button venom poster so that's cool um but yeah, man, one of my all-time favorite records. Is it as good as Welcome to Hell? Not for me. I mean, sorry. I f keep fucking forgetting. Is it as good? Yes, it is as good. It's not better. It is not better than Welcome to Hell. I would say this album is as good, um, but not better than Welcome to Hell. So yeah, Black Metal by Venom. Essential. All right, last but not least, another Black Metal classic. Um, Bathory of the Return, man. Um, what year is this? And I don't remember the year of black metal. I want to say it's 84. Could be 85. I don't recall. I think it's 84. 83? Nah. Cool. This is a OG Press, too. On, this is on Under One Flag, I think. Oh, no, it's on Combat. Um, Son of the Damned, Bestial Lust, Return of Darkness and Evil. Fucking sick uh, um, Bathory raise their blood filled cups uh, total destruction born for burning fucking classic sadist tormentor wins this is to me is like one of the original um, black metal records this sounds like black metal like second wave pretty much took everything from the return in my opinion um, besides Celtic Frost they just mixed like the return uh fucking black metal and uh, morbid tales all together and they're like okay this is second wave the second wave now maybe they added I'm lying too because second wave added in a lot of elements from death metal um, because most of those bands were death metal at the time so they, they have a sprinkling of death metal mixed in there so it's not as pure as people think um, but <clears throat> this album to me man it's just not, it's just a banger. Banger of a record. Uh, pure black metal to me. Like, If people say, what's your favorite black metal record? 
It's it's hard to say. It could be this one. Um, you could order a Bathory shirt for ten bucks, man, from Sweden, and could order the first Bathory record as well. That's cool. Um, this is a darker record, I think, to me, uh, the debut. Um, Yellow Goat, we'll just call it, is more, again, has that Venom motorhead sound to it, where this one has maybe more of a mix of um, Venom and maybe Discharge mixed in here. You could definitely hear the Discharge influence. And I know Porthon's talked about his love for Discharge. You can kind of hear it on this. It's a lot dirtier sounding. Um, but, man, great, great fucking record. Is it better than the debut? For me, it's close, but no. Um, the debut, Yellow Goat, probably one of my favorite black metal albums. Again, I love that record. I love the simplicity of it. This ups the ante of that record, and then, you know, from then on, they, they got more, um, you know, majestic, more... Um, intricate technical not technical but more more songwriting skills after this record but this record fucking rules the atmosphere on this record really can't be touched um, and it just fucking rules uh, it is as good as the debut alright so there we go that's it that's all I got 41 minutes shit I was trying to do like a 20 minute video but you guys don't have to watch this whole thing well you already got here so fuck man thank you Anyways, I want to thank you all again, man. I really appreciate the subs. Um, if you guys want to see more stuff or see, give me a topic, man. Just throw a topic down there. And I'll answer any of your questions for $10. I'm just shitting you. <laughs> Zing. Uh, no, um, fuck it, man. I'll answer your questions for free. We could do a video where I just answer questions. I'll do a live stream. You guys just fucking... I'll answer fucking questions about fucking animals and zoos and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Movies. Whatever you want to fucking talk about, man. Alright, uh, but anyways. Cheers, guys. Again, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and there's very much more to come. More streams, more deep dives, more fucking everything. Um, metal up your ass, man. Metal up your fucking ass. Uh, cheers, and make sure you do this fucking video and send me a fucking link or a tag or some shit appreciate it again cheers